Good morning. Today's meditation, Almighty God, thank you for giving me credible evidence to support my faith in you from our daily bread. Please join me in the call to worship found in your bulletin. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us, the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from old, that we would be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord and prepare his ways, and give knowledge and salvation, his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in the darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Today's opening hymn, Come Ye Thankful People Come, is found on page 461 in the Red Pilgrim Hymnal. May stand if you are able and comfortable. Join me in the invocation and Lord's Prayer found in your bulletin. Though many forces have scattered us in various ways, we invite you to bring us together within ourselves and all around us. Prepare our hearts, minds, and spirits, gathering God, to be present and ready to receive exactly what we need from the time of worship. We pray as Jesus taught us, saying, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May now be seated. Today's announcements are found on the back on the back of the bulletin. The flowers on the altar today are given by Jeff and Cheryl Field in loving mem memory of Rusty Field. She's missed every day. If you would like to sign up for flowers, the form is found in the bulletin uh, on the bulletin board in the narthex. Um, we invite you to please join us after church in Fellowship Hall for coffee hour, which is hosted by Miles and Jeanette. Thank you. If you would like to sign up for hosting coffee hour and uh, providing some goodies for all of us to share, uh, that sign up sheet is found in Fellowship Hall and uh, by the kitchen door. So please uh, sign up if you can. The rest of the year is open. We are still looking for people to sign up to light the, uh, the candles during our Advent season. Uh, if you are interested, please either see Kathy Frazier or Reverend Baker uh, to, to volunteer. It can be a family, a person, a group of, pe of friends, whoever. Um, but we do still need some people. We yes. have a sign up for that, right? There is a sign up in the Narthex as well. Uh, the giving tree is here. Uh, Susan, do you have anything additional you would like to say, or I can just read what's written? Most of the information is open, so once again, we are coordinating with the paper and the Thank you very much. Giving tree. Question. Oh, question. Um, you want the gift receipts for those, or just if you like clothes, if you're buying clothes, I suggest yes, you put the gift receipt in the package. Mm -hmm. So to recap, gifts can be wrapped. Please make sure the tag is on the outside. If you would like to provide a gift receipt, you are able to, and all gifts need to be returned by December 11th. So if you are interested in ABLE, please, after the service, uh, sign up, take a tag, make sure you put your name and contact information on the list so Susan can chase after you if your gift isn't here on time so we can make sure all of these children have something under the tree for them on Christmas Day. Uh, one more. Yes, thank you to everyone who helped put together the Veterans Day service. Uh, we are in full Christmas service mode here, so uh, after signing up for the Advent wreath and taking a tag, if you haven't put in your poinsettia order form, uh, they are in the bulletin, so please make sure that those uh, are to Kathy by December 4th, uh, so we can have all our beautiful poinsettias on the altar for Christmas. We have a Bible study on Tuesday, November 22nd at 6 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. Uh, it's studying the letter to the Col Colossians. Uh, so please read Colossians 4 if you are able and would like to participate. Additionally, we are hosting a, a traditional ecumenical Thanksgiving service this Wednesday, the 23rd at 7 p.m. Reverend Don Bliss uh, will be joining and we are asking for goodwill offerings of non-perishable foods or grocery uh, grocery store gift cards uh, if you are attending that service. Our 
traditional announcements are, are as follows. Reverend Baker's blog can be found on his website listed here in the bulletin. Uh, he had, continues to be available on Fridays in his office here at the church if anyone would like a meeting or a phone call. Uh, and finally, uh, we are continuing to accept donations of food and grocery gift, ca gift cards uh, for our Thanksgiving donation um, drive. So that box is in the narthex. Are there any other announcements? I have a few. Uh, for the Thanksgiving service uh, on Wednesday, um, I ask if you are going to attend, that you please come in the front door and not the kitchen door. The reason for that is because uh, our AA meeting will be going around around the same time, and the second A stands for anonymous. So we want to make sure to respect their privacy. There will be a screen up between the two areas if you need to use the restrooms uh, downstairs. I think it's less, I don't think that um, you know, people from Don's Church or other churches coming will necessarily think of that. It's you people that need to be reminded of that, so I'm reminding you of that. Okay, um, speaking of other churches, uh, the uh, today service from uh, St. John Newman Church in East um, Freetown is coming up next Sunday. Kind of late notice a little bit. It is called Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord. Uh, it asks the question, who is your John the Baptist? And for whom are you, John the Baptist? Come and see. And that will be again next Sunday, the 27th at 7 p.m. at St. John Newman Parish, 157 Middleborough Road in East Freetown, Massachusetts. Um, I do not know if they will be serving refreshments afterwards, but I have been told it will not be locusts and wild honey. So just make sure that you know that. So we're finishing up Colossians on uh, this Tuesday, uh, the following Tuesday, the 29th. We're going to be starting our Advent series. I was able to pick up two more books in case you need them. Uh, you can buy these books from me. You can borrow these books. Just make sure you get them back to me at the end, and we can make sure they get a good home later on. But uh, th it's going to be um, pretty simple. We're going to look at sort of a Christmas story uh, each week from a different gospel. Um, and you know, which is interesting because Mark doesn't have one, so to speak. And if people are available on the 27th of uh, December, the Tuesday after Christmas, we can do an extra session. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can have a Merry Christmas, but we'll uh, cross that road when we get to it. Double check, see if anything I'm forgetting. Giving tree, but not funny. Right. Uh, in terms of the. Um, Advent lighting, I know that we have somebody for this coming Sunday. I have somebody for Christmas Eve. And I have another group that's going to read some of the, one of the other three. But that means I have two more uh, that we need. So if you are willing to volunteer, uh, that is, I need two more groups. All right. Remember, a group can be a single person as well. And so if there are no further announcements, let us now move to our time of joy and concern. We have our continued prayers today for Susan Lemos, for Leon Cudworth Sr., for Tiff and Kim Bonica, for Millie Moore, for Mary Lou Nicola and Anne Marie Allen, uh, for Nick Riccardi and for Paul and Moreno and Walter. Uh, for Bobby Files and for Jack, uh, for Paul Kudo and for Joanne, and uh, for also we'll keep praying for Bethany Costa. Are there any other requests this morning? Right. So no news is good news, I suppose. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot to update. Um, those of you who have been praying for our Paul, Paul yeah. he is home. Mm -hmm. uh, he just keeps pulling his miracles. It's amazing. Um, so he is home, he's still getting blood platelets and chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, they're, they're, their goal right now is to make memories. They just, uh, they're, they're on the Monday at a time kind of. Okay. So uh, just incredible news. We, so many times we said there's no way to go through this, and he has. So yeah. go uh, th Things did seem pretty grim the last time you <laughs> mentioned it. it. Was, so yeah. It was huge. They did not see. Okay. Well, if this is if now is the season of making memories, tis the season for making memories. So, there you go. Any other prayer? Yes. Uh, 
food truck yet. I've been serving him for five years, and he has probably never been so. Right. And he, so, but he got, he's okay? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, so hopefully he'll be there on, uh, on, two, on Friday, if he needs to at least. Other prayer requests? Then let us now all pray uh, together. O eternal God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, we pause with somber hearts on this last Sunday of the church year. O Christ the ruler, provide forgiveness for the foolish ways of humankind, as you provided forgiveness to those around the cross. Provide correction from cynicism and sarcasm and the hope for an easy remedy to things wrong, such as was exhibited by one of those thieves on the cross. Provide hope such as you provided to the other thief on the cross when you promised he would be with you in paradise. Provide assurance that the Jesus of the cross will lead all of us to victory and eternal life. Be present to all who have suffered losses. Provide your healing comfort for the grieving and compassion through us for all who suffer. We pray especially for Susan, Leon, for Tiff and Kim, for Millie and Mary Lou and Anne Marie, for Nick and Paul, Moreno and Walter, for Bobby and Jack and Paul and Joanne, for Bethany and for Jay. Hear the silent prayers of our hearts as we listen to your word for us. O oh God, lead us in the coming year. Deepen our love and commitment to you in the cause of serving each other and the community around us. Deepen our ability to trust and believe in the fundamental goodness of life. Deepen our ability to greet each new day and see it as a gift from you and an opportunity for triumph. Deepen our ability to affirm our sisters and brothers in the faith and to help them to believe in themselves. Deepen our ability to discover and serve the Christ in our neighbor and the world around us. O oh God, lead us and be our guide. Amen. God spoke to the prophets of old of opportunities. And so too, we are faced with an opportunity to participate in God's restorative action in the world. Where others have scattered, God is gathering. Let us be empowered to share our gifts fruitfully and allow God to multiply them for the good of all. This morning's offering will now be received.
for your invitation to move and give faithfully and abundantly god we ask that you extend your blessings over these gifts that we now offer so that they can be multiplied in service to you and the missions of this congregation amen our hymn of preparation this morning comes from the red pilgrim hymnal it is number 204 rejoice the lord is king
all be seated. Today's epistle lesson comes from Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 20, and can be found on page 870 in your Pew Bible. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saint in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things are consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things the might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Our gospel lesson comes from the book of uh, Luke, gospel according to Luke, chapter 23, verses 33 to 43, and can be found on page 776 to 777 in your pew Bible. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgiven them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them deride him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a subs uh, superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the others answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou, thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. This ends the reading. Good morning again. So today's sermon has going to have a lot of references to stuff from the 70s and 80s, so bear with me. All right, now the title of today's sermon is Moving On Up, and one of the reasons I chose that title is because I like the theme song to the Jeffersons. Uh, everybody, anybody know the theme song to the Jeffersons? Uh, anybody willing to sing the theme song to the Jeffersons for us right now? All right, nobody. I don't think I'm quite in the voice for it today. But as the kids say these days, it slaps. Or at least they used to say that until some middle-aged guy said it in a sermon, and now they have to now find something else to say. So in case you haven't seen The Jeffersons, it's a sitcom from the 70s and 80s, uh, it is about a wealthy black couple who are finally able to get a place in the Upper East Side of Manhattan after moving on up in the world. And this high-rise apartment is a symbol of their upward social mobility. Uh, it's a sign of success for George and Weezy Jefferson, who scrounged up through Harlem, clashed with Archie Bunker in working class Queens, and now finally have their piece of the pie. But while the lesson of the song moving on up is social and economic, it's written in the style of gospel music, which immediately makes one think of spiritual things. And so when we hear about moving on up to an apartment in the sky, 
we naturally think of heaven and freeing ourselves from the, the suffering that we see around us. All right, so I'm going to shift gears now. We're going to talk about Thanksgiving, which is coming up on Thursday. Now, I hope that you are prepared for everything on Thursday, although if you do need sort of a little pick-me-up right before Thanksgiving, there is the ecumenical Thanksgiving service today at 7. I just want to make sure everybody knows that, including people online. Okay, so kind of like moving on up, Thanksgiving is secular, but it has religious uh, undertones. So when we pray in church, we often are thankful for the saving grace of God. But when we pray or give thanks around the dining room table, we're usually thank thankful for things like family and for food, for prosperity, and for the beautiful things around us. The blessings that we normally enumerate on Thanksgiving are really contrasted with the things that other people lack. It's why there's such a focus on charity at this time of year, including the Thanksgiving baskets generously donated by the Joe's family and Phoenix Oil, uh, and our own collection that we're taking today and also uh, on Wednesday to help those in need. But the fact that some people can enjoy a beautiful Thanksgiving and others struggle to feed their families or heat their homes reminds us of the very limited nature of the world around us. Perhaps the earliest spiritual struggle that humanity has dealt with is the question of death in a hostile world. According to my research, the first ritual burials, which sort of indicated that people were thinking about these things, date back maybe as far back as 100,000 years ago. It's something that's been with us pretty much forever. And so when we look for meaning in the seeming meaninglessness of so many things, some people have seen nature, this world around us, as something that's evil or worthless and that we should be escaping from. In the past few weeks, we have been looking at the letter to the Colossians in our Bible study group. And the Paul of that letter tells the people, Watch out that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Now, I did some more research. I'm always doing research, apparently. And I looked at what this philosophy and empty deceit that Paul is talking about might have been. And I look specifically at the Neoplatonic philosophy that was derived from the ancient teachings of the, the famous Greek philosophers, Socrates and Plato. Everybody heard of them? Okay, or uh, if you ever saw Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, it's Socrates, you know. So anyway, without getting too technical, I told you there's stuff from the 70s and 80s in this sermon. Plato taught that the world that we think is real is really just a shadow of a spiritual world above us. A world that's made up of pure ideas of the way that things should be. And not the imperfect way that things are. For example, in such a philosophy, the ideal human being would be beautiful and strong and without any age or sickness. Which is a far cry from the, what we actually see with people around us. There's one ideal of a person, but there's many different imperfect people in the world. And so according to this philosophy, the further away you get from this god of ideas, or the one they sometimes call it, the more broken and chaotic things get. And later philosophers of this school taught that the goal of our spirituality was to realize your spiritual nature and then to escape the entropy and the suffering of gross matter. If one wants to be close to God, one must reject as much as possible the world around them. Now, Paul rejected this way of thinking and insisted instead on how God, through Christ, is intimately connected 
to the world around us. He wrote, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. Those are kind of spiritual beings. All things have been created through him and for him. He is himself before all things, and in him all things hold together. Theologians sometimes call this passage the hymn to the cosmic Christ. This Christ who is not vaguely defined as divine, but who is at the heart of the fabric of all creation. So all those things that we thank God for this week come about because of Jesus. And Paul writes that in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. It's quite a lot of fullness in the fullness of God. So the natural world is not what happens when God is distant and things kind of decay into nothingness. It's when God is connected to the world. Not jolly bringing the world into being or maintaining its existence, but actually redeeming it as well. Because Paul writes, through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, not all people, all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Through Christ and the cross, not only are we human sinners redeemed, but so too is the natural world around us. Theologians, with maybe too much time on their hands, often ponder, ponder exactly how Jesus redeems us. How we are saved from sin and from our fear of death, from all of those, uh, sin, all of those fears and anxieties that we have that always seem to pull us away from God. And one such theory is called recapitulation. I'll spare you the Greek for that. Because I don't think I, even I can pronounce that. So God saves us by recapitulation, which means gathering together or summing up, or in more colloquially, recapping the world. How does that make any sense at all? How does recapping the world save anybody? Well, let me put forward an example from another Thanksgiving tradition. Let's talk now about football. How many of you ever videotaped a football game to watch it later? Raise your hands. Nobody? Not a Super Bowl? Oh, Dave did. Okay. So, I remember back when I was young, in 1986, we were at a party of a friend of mine, and it was game six of the World Series, and he was going to record that game so he could watch forever, over and over again, the day that the Red Sox finally win the World Series. Needless to say, I'm pretty sure that that tape got recorded over not long after that, maybe with 20-minute workout or something like that. Now, when I was a little older than that, I used to record, video record things all the time, especially things that I thought would never get an official release on home video. Things like the X-Men cartoon that I've mentioned before, or maybe carefully edited recordings of video games I liked playing. I think you know how much of a dork I am at this point. I've been here for five years after all. But the thing about videotapes or cassette tapes or other forms of what we now call analog media is that they degrade the more you copy them. So if I made a copy of my video cassettes and gave them to a friend, and then he made a copy of those and gave it to his friends, before you know it, the quality would be so bad that you really couldn't really tell what was going on. And we still see this with photocopies today. If you make a photocopy and then a photocopy and a photocopy, the quality is going to get worse and worse. I mean, this is a beautiful uh, photocopy of black and white of a color image. And if we made a copy of this and a copy of this, soon it would just be kind of a big blob of where John the Baptist is supposed to be. So this videotape model, it's kind of like that platonic philosophy. The further you get from the source, 
the worse things get. Now, on the other hand, there is what I like to call the NFL Films model. Who has ever seen an NFL Films retelling of a football game? Raise your hand. Okay. Anybody else? A few people. Okay. Now, if we watched a football game, a lot of times football games are very exciting. But there are some, some boring parts. There are those long stretches between the snaps. There are those three and outs that have no real tension and have little immediate significance to the game. And sometimes if the score is settled, things get really kind of boring, like maybe what happened in the BC Notre Dame game yesterday. Some games are just really clunkers. There's just uninteresting scores. There's mediocre teams. If you think back on Thanksgiving, probably a lot of those Detroit Lions games fell under that category, the ones they always put at noontime when everyone's actually eating their Thanksgiving meal. Yeah. So that's the reality of what NFL games are like. But then there's the NFL Films version of the games. And here everything is an epic. The highlights are filled with slow motion and exciting music and narrations with booming, gravelly, baritone voices like John Facenda saying, the frozen tundra of Municipal Stadium. You know. Now, critic Matt Zoller cites once wrote that NFL films could make even a tedious stalemate seem as momentous as the battle for the Alamo. So, in the right frame of mind, when things are recapped or summed up, the meaning can sometimes become apparent. Even the little things that are presented in the right way seem to matter. What seems ordinary can be raised to a position of consequence and even glory. This is not the best comparison in the world, but I think that we can see that according to this recapitulation model, Jesus does a similar thing with the world. Because our world is drab and meaningless sometimes. Much of our life ends in misery. And even our greatest victories never last longer than our own seasons. But when we see Jesus' presence, Jesus' fullness, at work, we feel the fullness of God, even in the most tragic and insignificant things. We know that the world is a beautiful place for which we can truly be thankful. Christ is the king over all this world. For as it says in the Colossians, he has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead so that he might come to have first place in everything. First place. Jesus recaps the world and makes it better. One popular way of understanding this from theological circles is that Jesus is the second Adam. Like Adam, he is a human who is directly created by God. But while Adam's sin led to rejection and death, Jesus' sinfulness and self-sacrifice brings salvation and eternal life. Jesus has recapped what being a human really means. And through Jesus, we can all rise as well. Paul writes, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace through the blood of his cross. Paul highlights once again the importance of the cross. And just here at the end, I would like to turn to Jesus' crucifixion as a sign of how the fullness of Christ is found even in the worst situations. And how Christ recapping events of evil can bring about their transformation. The gospel lesson today was from the, is that famous crucifixion scene from the gospel according to Luke. As Jesus is mocked 
by those who condemned him, he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And one of the other criminals crucified next to Jesus mocks him as well. But the other, the one whom tradition names Dismas, recognizes the innocence of Jesus, recognizes the glory of Jesus, even in his suffering. And Dismas says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replies, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Even a man condemned as a terrorist, so beaten that his survival on a cross is reduced from days to a few hours, holds within him lordship over all of creation, an image of the invisible realities beyond our comprehension. And because Jesus is recapping the worst parts of human evil and suffering, he is perfecting them. He's transforming evil into good. He's moving creation away from that place of chaos and entropy and into a reunion with the fullness of God. As the church father Athanasius famously put it, God became man so that man might become God. Not literally God, but divine, spiritual, connected forever with the fullness of God. So let's go back to the real world for a second, and let's talk about Thanksgiving one more time. When you express your gratitude this Thanksgiving, make sure to be thankful for the people in your life, for the food you enjoy, for the marvelous world around you. But also thank God for saving you, not by bringing you out of this supposedly real world and then into some abstract realm of ideas, but by recapping all the good and bad things in life and bringing them up all into perfection, into that truly real world. Because when, through God, we are moving on up, everyone and everything will finally get their piece of the pie. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, grant us meaning so that we can see the glory you have prepared for us. Comfort us in our times of sorrow and challenge us in our times of arrogance. And let us always be thankful for every blessing in our lives. Amen. Our closing hymn today is not going to be moving on up. It's not in the hymnal. But what is in the hymnal is one of my favorite songs for the reign of Christ or Christ is King Sunday, which is today, the last Sunday of the liturgical year. And this hymn from the, new, from the Red Hymnal is number 199, Crown Him With Many Crowns. Let's all stand if you'd like and let's all sing together. sing of him who died for thee and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity crown him the lord of love behold his hands and side rich wounds yet in beauty glorified no angel in the sky can fully bear that sight but downward bends his burning eye at 
bright mysteries so bright. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives so death may die. Crown him the Lord of years, the potentate of time, creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise shall never, never fail throughout eternity. Amen. And now may you experience God's goodness in your coming, going, and staying. May you witness God's activity in your work, play, and the world at large. May you feel God's fullness in your life, relationships, and self, and may you know God's love now and forevermore. Amen. Let us turn and sing. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above.